Good morning, saints of God. How are you doing today? Just think it's Saturday, one of our favorite days of the week. And uh, I'm just excited about it because we're one day closer to Sunday. And I am excited about tomorrow's sermon as well. Tomorrow we'll be talking about that third piece of armor. And boy, if you were watching the services last week or had the opportunity, if God gave you the opportunity to be in church with us last Sunday, Brother Mike did a great job preaching on the breastplate of righteousness. And so today we will be looking at the third piece of, of that armor. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, tomorrow we'll be looking at that third piece of armor. And that'll be the shoes and the prepared for the peace of the gospel. Come find out what the Apostle Paul is saying to you and I about that. That's tomorrow morning starting at 1030. The music's going to be good and love to see you there. Also, don't forget now, school is starting on Monday. Let's be praying for our teachers, praying for our students, pray for God's protection, his wisdom, his grace and mercy. And I can tell you this, uh, 27 years now the school's been there. God has been so good. Uh, I'm just telling you, God has been so good to us. I just want to thank him for his blessings to us. I wished we would have been as good to God as what God has been good to us. So uh, love the Lord and I'm just excited about it. Well, let's look at this. Very interesting story takes place here as we open up the chapter of Mark, chapter number seven. And uh, the Pharisees once again are coming and trying to trick Jesus. They're trying to capture him. They're trying to get him uh, caught in his words in some kind of web. And But you know, here's the thing with Jesus Christ. He is the personification of truth. When they are coming to talk with Jesus, they better watch out because they're going to run into a wall because Jesus Christ is the personification of truth. And so if you don't want the truth, you better be very careful. And uh, that's what they find out here. I love this verse, but at the same time, I think we need to be careful with this verse because, you know, the word of God's a two-edged sword. And so we got to think about it this way, but there's a great spiritual truth in here for all of us this morning if we will listen to it. Mark chapter 7, verse number 6. And the disciples, let me give you a little bit of background. They're coming with all these questions about why don't the disciples uh, follow the traditions of uh, the Pharisees? And there are so many traditional things. And, you know, like washing the bowl out, and just things. And, and they were trying to make a big deal of it. And it was very minor. And uh, so Jesus answers here, and he says a, a great truth. It says in verse number six, And he answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written. Now get what he says. These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Jesus looked at those Pharisees and said, You bunch of fakers. Listen, you think you can do all this stuff and be righteous. Let me tell you something. The truth is there's no righteousness in you. And the only way you can ever be saved and have righteousness in you is if you trust me and come to me and let my righteousness fill you. Uh, he talks about them being far from me. You know, uh, that's where these hypocrites were. I love the fact that Jesus turned around and called them a hypocrite. You know, so many times in our lives, we want to turn around and we want to call somebody a hypocrite and point our finger at them. And, and I think... Whoa, we better slow down. We better pump the brakes here a little bit, brothers and sisters, because, you know, if we're not careful, we can eat some shoe leather. And if we're not careful, in our attempting to call others hypocrites, we ourselves can become the very hypocrites we're talking about. You know, it used to be a long time ago when you came up to the railroad track, there was these words, stop, look, and listen. I, I don't see that very often anymore. But uh, when I was first learning to drive, that's that's what was there on the railroad tracks. Uh, sometimes, you know, that's some, good that's some good advice for each one of us is stop, look, and listen. S you know, stop before you criticize those first century legalists. And they, they were a bunch of legalists. There's no doubt about it. That's what they were. They were legalists. And yeah, we want to jump up and scream, you bunch of hypocrites. But you know, before we do that, before we get on to those first century legalists, maybe we should ask ourselves some questions. 
you know, like maybe a question like, do we add shame to other people's lives or do we really set them free? Are our words, are, are, are our words so heavy or do our words lift and free people? Look at this question. Do we cultivate trust with our children? Or do we try to control them? You know, it's one thing when your child's 5, 6, 7, 12, 14, 15. But when your children become adults, 25, 30, 45, is it really our place to control them? Maybe you and I should cultivate some trust by the example we live, by the words we say. And then let me ask you this question. And I realize they're kind of all over the place, but uh, just let me ask you this question. When you see somebody uh, young in the faith, do you, do you try to saddle them down with rules? Or do you try to encourage them with a relationship in Jesus Christ? You know, I, I'm for rules. Listen, I, I think, you know, I, I'm glad that we live in a country where there's laws. I'm glad we live in a country where there's rules to drive the road, drive the cars on the roads and things like that. But you know what? When it comes to our faith, it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And not only that, when it comes to our service, it's about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I serve him because of my love for him. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we saddle people down with rules. Why well, you don't love the Lord if you don't come to church or you don't love the Lord if you're not tithing or you don't love the Lord. Yeah, listen, I want to tell you something. We need to worry about reconciling people to a relationship with Jesus Christ and helping them find that truth. Which brings me to another thought. When you and I see sin in somebody's life, do you find yourself going after them for it or do you find them do you find yourself being a reconciler in their life? Do you find yourself trying to help them get right with the Lord instead of going after them? You know, we need to be careful. We just need to be careful. If you do those kind of things, maybe it's time to stop. Stop. Then the second thing is look. Look in the mirror. Before you start naming the failures of others, look at our lives. You know, Get this truth. Now, Jesus Christ called these Pharisees hypocrites, but he was qualified to call them hypocrites because he could look into his own life and he was perfect. He was completely perfect. He knew perfection. He knew no sin and did no sin and had no sin. He was qualified to speak to them this way, to name the sins of others. He but before you and I do that, we need to look. We need to look in the mirror. We need to look in this heart. And we need to say, Lord, cleanse this heart. Make me right. You know, I realize sometimes it takes guts to pull the mask off and look into the mirror of God's truth. But I want to tell you something. If you do it, You'll be surprised what happens. You know, you may be wearing a mask around your Christian friends. Truth be told, they already see through it. They already see through it. You know, it's one of those things, the word hypocrite, faker, pretender, actor, whatever you want to call it, it just has a way of shining through our mask. You know, one of the ways of winning the lost world, the non-Christians, is for us to live in front of them the truth. And... Uh, I don't mean you need to confess all your sins in front of them. That's, that's ridiculous. But I do mean that you and I should be transparent about our struggles and pointing people to the cross. Amen? Doesn't that sound good? And then not only do we need to stop and look, but we need to listen. Listen to what the Bible says about freedom. This is the point that I really wanted to show you. You see, even though Jesus didn't use the word free in this whole little story, he did something. He freed his disciples from those traditions. Wow. 
He freed his disciples from those condemning self-made rules of the Pharisees. Jesus stood against those legalists saying about his disciples. You go back and read it. Read those first six verses. He's saying, these men are okay. You leave them alone. They are free. Why? Because they're in a relationship with me. In the inside, though, it may not be perfect. I'm filling them with my righteousness. And, uh, boy, what a powerful thought. And so I guess really what we need to do is realize that each one of us have a job to do. This week, today, let's go about setting people free. Setting people free with the love and the mercy and the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we want to live clean lives. I understand living clean lives. Yes, we want to do things that are right and righteously. But we want to do them out of a heart of love for people and to serve our King, okay? That's what we need to do. So let's pray and let's think about it. Heavenly Father, we do love you and we thank you for all your mercy and grace to us. Father, thank you that you realize and that you know that we can't keep the law to get ourselves into heaven. And Lord, we can't even keep a rule book to maintain a relationship with you. And Father, thank you that you don't desire us to keep a rule book. But Father, you desire for us to come to know your love and to love you back with all that we have. Father, that we may love you with all of our heart and soul and strength. Father, that we may love you with our mind, that we may love you with our soul, that we may love you with our spirit. Father, thank you for these dear friends who listen faithfully. And Lord, I pray today that you bless them. And Lord, help us to be reconcilers. Help us to be, as we're going to preach about tomorrow, warriors of peace. Warriors of peace. Father, only, only, only in the gospel can a warrior war for peace. Lord, we thank you for it. In Christ's name, amen. All right, go serve your king. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>